As many of you know, I have a German boyfriend. It's like 80% of what I talk about on this channel. So yeah, you're probably well aware of it. Uh, we've been together for seven years and I live with him for four years now. Before moving to Germany and live in the same apartment with him, I have prepared that there would be many uh, cultural differences and cultural clash when two people from two different countries living together. But still, I didn't expect that there were that many differences. Now we have found solutions for most of our problems, but that was a long process. And in this video, I'm gonna let you guys know some insights about it. I have made a list of all of the things that my German boyfriend did that drove me insane why we live together. And he was told to make a list as well. Joining us today, one again, German boyfriend. <laughs> So honey, you're ready for uh, me expose you on the internet? Uh, no. So the first problem I have while living with this man is his love for fresh air. I mean, everybody should love fresh air. He just loves it a bit much. For example, he always wants the house to be full of like new and fresh air and it's okay in the summer. But in the winter in Germany, it's like minus degree outside. It's cold, it's rainy, it's super snowy as well sometimes. And I was being happy inside the house, being cozy, wearing my shorts because we have heater and it's like 20 degree. And out of nowhere, this man would show up and then opening all of the windows and then snow would come in and then... <laughs> There's no snow coming. Wind would come in and suddenly the temperature dropped to like minus five degrees. Yeah. Yes, of course. <laughs> and he did that like 10 times per day, so the house is always, always cold. It has come to a point that before he went to Luften, that's how they call it in Germany, opening the door so the fresh air could come in, he need to tell me first so I can have time to jump onto the bed, wrapping myself under a blanket, wait until he open the door, close it, wait until the room get warmer so I can walk normally again. Knock, knock, knock. What do you want? The truth wants to come in. <laughs> You open the door, you open the windows, by the way, whenever she says doors, she means windows, because in Vietnamese it's the same word. In Vietnamese, door and window both mean cửa. Those words are the same for me. <laughs> so, when you open the window, then the cold air comes in, it makes it fresh, the stinky air goes out, which is good. And then, like, the heater notices that it's cold, so it directly starts to work like crazy, so that the temperature is the same again. And that takes like 10 minutes again. That's not 10 minutes, honey. I was always freezing. The main point is that we need to get the water out of the air in the winter, because there's too much humidity inside of the room that otherwise will start molding. So when I was working and I wasn't out in the house until the afternoon, like there was no one opening the door for the whole day. And I also need to remind you that this beautiful lady <laughs> is having three raw meals per day while each meal usually has a soup within. So like there's a lot of water getting into the air constantly and no window getting open. So I'm coming home and literally the water is dripping from the windows because outside it's way colder than inside. So the water is condensating there and yeah. Can I just say something? Since I'm Vietnamese and my country is very humid, I have no sense of like humidity. If the room is like super humid and water is dripping, it just remind me of home. So <laughs> I just don't notice the difference. Okay. It's not my fault. One measurement we, we took against this was like buying dehumidifiers, two dehumidifiers for our old 56 square meter apartment. And it was and working over time. They were working all the time. <laughs> all days, every day. I, I don't remember how much space was there inside, but they were easily taking like more than 20 liters of water out of the air per day. Okay. You are exaggerating. Like we needed to, to empty them every day and it was still still not enough. And at the same time, she started to complain that now the air would be too dry. The problem is since I'm Vietnamese, I'm not doing well with dry weather. When the air is too dry, my eyes started to be very red and I started to cry and I couldn't control that. My skin started to like being very itchy and then I lose all of my hair, not all of my hair, but like my hair just falling out. And that is why I want the room to be a bit more humid so that my body can adapt a bit better. That was the reason for a lot of heated argument between us. But um, we finally took a very big decision. We moved out of that apartment and moved into this new apartment. I don't know what happened here, but there is no um, humidity problem here. The apartment is just extremely dry. It just... <laughs> 
no matter how many soup I cook, the apartment is just too dry. It gets to the point that we have to buy a humidifier instead to make the room a bit more humid. And he also stopped uh, Lufton that often because yeah, now we have another problem. We don't have humidity problem anymore. <laughs> My next problem with this man is that he cannot read subtitles. He cannot read it. <laughs> it's not his fault because in Germany, they dub everything. Every Hollywood movie, every Japanese anime, they use a German voice actor. And, and they're they good. Yeah, okay, they it's are not, good. It's not like you have one person who's voice acting the whole movie. <laughs> they are very good, but he was watching that kind of movie since he was a child. So he's unable of watching like a foreign movie and reading the subtitle at the same time. His eyes were not just trained for it. Whereas in Vietnam, I was always needing to read subtitle if I want to uh, watch foreign films. So I'm used to it. So now whenever we want to sit down on the couch and watch a movie from Korea or from Japan, for example, and if they don't have like English dubbing or German dubbing, he just couldn't watch it and we cannot watch together. And you know what's the worst part? Like he watched Japanese anime with German dubbing. No disrespect to the voice actor. I think they did a fantastic job. But personally, I would prefer to watch anime or Korean movie in their original voice because I just think that it's more emotional that way. Yeah, but when I want to read, I will take a book and not a, not a movie. When, when I want to watch a movie, I want to focus on the movie. And and I don't want it to, to sound like, like I don't want to watch English movies in, in original tone or something. That I don't have any problem with that. I don't read the subtitles, I just listen to them and everything is fine. But when they are talking in a language that I don't understand at all, then it's just too stressful for me. Why is it stressful for you? Because I cannot read and look at the pictures at the same time. I just have two eyes, they need to point and I'm not a chameleon. Why can you do that? <laughs> In Vietnam, if I want to watch any foreign movie, most of the time I have to read subtitles. So I was trained since I was like 12 years old to watch what happening on the screen and with the subtitle at the same Maybe time. Maybe you answered your question at the same time. Maybe it's time for you to train, honey, to train yourself. Do you know that if you can read subtitles, you can watch so many movies which is not available with German dubbing? You mean Korean drama and yeah. stuff? Yeah, French movie, so, Spanish so. movie. So at the end, we kind of find a solution. If I found an anime that I really, really want to watch, but there is no dubbing, I would be the one who dubbed it for him. <laughs> <laughs> Which so, is funny, actually. So he's watching what's happening on the screen and I just read the subtitle. It's really exhausting. So I only do that when I really, really want to watch that movie with him. Otherwise, we just watch German and uh, no, English movie instead. My next point is a little bit difficult because it's partly also a very sweet point. But yeah, since we're living together, whenever at any time, whatever we're doing, Ian's family is calling, she's answering the phone immediately. I don't know. I know it might be a little bit strange that I come from a family where we actually schedule calls. <laughs> it's something very German. But I don't know. Sometimes it's just that the right moment but uh, yeah she explained it very uh, determined to me that she's in another country and whenever her family is calling she's not hanging up on them she's answering them so yeah that is at the same time very sweet but what comes on top of it is that I don't know Yuen doesn't know that she doesn't need to scream for actually reaching out to Vietnam. She can just talk into her phone normally. Seriously, when, whenever she's calling, she's directly starting to have the volume of a starting jumbo jet. As soon as it starts, I need to leave the room, go to another room. That was also a problem in the old apartment because there was not much other places to run to. But here, I changed the room. I have a door in between. It still sounds like they're sitting next to me, but like, no. At least it's already better. Because my family is very loud, okay? So if I just talk in my normal volume, they wouldn't hear me because they are screaming to talk to me. So I have to match their volume. Can I just highlight the fact that his family is scheduled call? <laughs> <laughs> like, like when his parents want to call him, they would like, dear German boyfriend. <laughs> it's not his name. We would like to call with you this app. No. They always schedule it like four days in advance. So like this Saturday afternoon at 3 p.m. <laughs> please be available and be on time. Love, Papa. 
<laughs> my family would never do that when they and want to call this me. This is how it should be. But when they want to call me, they call me. They call me in the morning. They call me in the evening. They call me when I just woke up. There has been never a schedule, yeah. and I always, I and, always and, pick up. And I'm very happy that that they get along with the time difference. Meanwhile, what means in the beginning, in the first three years, they were calling at four in the morning. And I had to pick up at four in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, hello, what happened? And my father would be like, what is my Facebook password? <laughs> <laughs> That's something that is also a little bit weird. Like sometimes I actually manage to, to stay around her while she's calling. But then, you know, I don't understand anything. Like they're like, and <laughs> screaming at each other happily. And then suddenly I have the phone in front of my face and like, I'm expected to know what they're talking about and, and get involved. And I'm like, hello, xin chào. Yeah, I mean, my family just want to... I, I don't think it's a problem, honey. You should be involved in two families matter. Yeah, like, yeah, <laughs> like I just need to be warned a little bit. All and you need to do is show up, smile and wave, honey. That's all they want to see from you. They yeah. don't understand you, so just wave. Yeah, maybe we can schedule a call. So my next point is that he has a problem of letting stuff go. And I wouldn't call him a harder yet but, <laughs> but on the internet yeah but it's it's truly a problem i noticed that stuff that is made from germany or get sold in german normally tend to last very very long and also germany is very good with uh keeping stuff that lasts for long he's very good at um using things and what is it called maintaining maintaining them but at the same time he just couldn't let stuff go. When I moved in with him four years ago, his house was a mountain of useless stuff. I barely had space to like walk around the house and it literally drove me insane. And that was one of our biggest argument for years. But I'm glad that he listened to me, that he agreed that he has a problem and I was helping him to slowly remove things that he doesn't really need. And especially once we move into this apartment, he got rid of a lot of stuff and, and now I'm pretty happy with the situation at the moment. Anyway, I would like you to say thank you sweetie for helping me. <laughs> You say it! You say it right now! You say it! <laughs> A few moments later... Yeah, Yuen really helped me, like, at, at the beginning I really had a problem with having too many things. Also, like, having the same thing several times. You have it and then you buy a new one, but you still keep the old one, because, yeah, it's too good for already throwing it away. But then, at that point, you just have too much of a thing. Like when I bought something new, like a new toaster, for example, and the old toaster was still working. So I put the old toaster into the basement for the case that the new toaster breaks. But like, I don't know. We're and then the you state. end up with five toasters in the basement. No, that's not true. Like when you buy a third toaster, you throw away the first toaster. <laughs> Okay, and the next point I want to mention is that Yuen has a problem with treating things with the care they deserve. Like, she's dropping things constantly, two times per day, she's walking into things, she's like slamming into things, and always also using things in ways that you should not use them. But, yeah, that is really hard to get, especially when you're taking care and try to maintain the things so that they last long. I just want to say that this is not a Vietnamese problem. I think it's just a me problem. I'm a bit, what is it called, clumsy? And uh, I don't know, it, I was born that way, okay? I bump into things, I fail very often, I drop things very often. And if you want to live with me, you have to deal with that, okay? Yeah, but I'm clumsy too. The thing is just that I would be happy if you would try to pay a little bit more attention. I do, honey. How many times did I bump into anything and like hurt myself recently? Today? What did I do? You always run into the heater, for example. We even have a plant that died because she was constantly running into it. There's no evidence that it caused the dying of the plant, but I really heavily <laughs> suggest that that was the reason. And I, it, I couldn't put the plant far enough from the walking way. <laughs> she managed to run into it. Maybe punctuality is a problem. 
because we don't have a car, so we need to go by public transport. So before we need to take our tram, I will need to constantly inform her <laughs> when we need to leave. Meanwhile, I start to tell her like 20 minutes before, but the problem is everything I get as an answer is always like, yes, of course, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. But who's not ready after those 20 minutes? And then, yeah, the solution is then going by taxi. And already that suggestion is hurting me until the guts, because it's like burning money. We both have a Deutschland ticket. We can drive with the public transport for free and then paying like 20 euros for a random grumpy dude to bring us somewhere is not what I want to do. I have nothing to defend myself here. <laughs> because I know that I was often late and since the day living with him, I think I have improved a lot and I'm not being late that often anymore. Right, honey? That's better. Yeah. Good, move on. What are you doing? I don't know, people didn't see so much from me, so I thought maybe at least something. You're giving them something to see? Yeah. <laughs> so, what will he do? What, what, what's that? It's a warm dance. So my next point, I'm not sure if it's a German thing or is it a man thing or it's just his thing, his thing, but um, he claimed that it's normal. During our first or second trip, I noticed that he has a tendency to just throw his dirty clothes on the floor. And I have never seen any Vietnamese do that. It is beyond dirty for me. <laughs> if you have dirty clothes, put them into a basket or wash them. Yeah, but when you're in a hotel, you don't have a possibility to wash them or a basket. So hang them, put them into a bag or something. But you also want me to hang up the clean clothes, so... Separate them somehow, you just don't throw them on the floor and then you yeah, walk past like, them or you step on but them. But they're dirty anyway. And then, like, of course, like, you should not do that constantly, but like, sometimes you can just do that. Isn't there even that saying, like, to dirty for the cupboard, to clean for the floor? Welcome to the chair. You're making that up, right? No. Say that in German. Zu sauber für den Boden, zu äh, dreckig für den Schrank. Willkommen auf dem Stuhl. I think he's making that up. But please let me know if this is a German thing or just his thing. It's good that he stopped doing it after I complained. So now dirty clothes go to dirty basket. And uh, I'm happy about that. Well, what I found interesting with this video now was that it was way less heated arguments like at the last one because I feel like we settled down and don't know found solution for pretty much everything here already. So yeah, I think we talk enough for this video. My throat is literally hurting because I was screaming out of excitement somehow. And um, thank you very much for watching. I will end the video here and I will see you guys in the next video. Bye bye. Bye bye. <laughs>